make you. Mistakes make you. A lot of us with that particular statement understand. But there are some of us that truly think that you learn more from your success when the correct thought process is you learn more from your mistakes. You learn what not to do. I told y'all a couple of weeks ago about me trying to be a chef, right? And me trying to cook because me and my wife are on this you know, workout fit and we said we're going to get fit and I told her, you know, they doing it for their health. I'm doing it to, to be fine, okay? That's, that's, that's the only reason why I'm working out and trying to eat right. That's the only They say, oh, it's for your health. I'm like, okay, that's cool. That'll be the second part. For me, I'm trying to get fine, right? And, and <laughs> they laugh because they know it's the truth, right? And so, but with that, I'm trying to cook right, but the more... I, I, I look and I read and the more I make mistakes I know what not to do I say okay I tried that last time that didn't work oh I tried this this combination and that combination and that didn't turn out the way I wanted it but had I not did all of that I wouldn't be able now there's this thing that I cook that I love like there's this, this fish this salmon that I do uh, and the, oh my goodness I'm not going to go through it, but it's, it's nicely seasoned. I cook it like, and, and you know, I'm not a grill master. Like, my brother can grill. My brother can, he can grill on the pit. That's just not me. But I, I got me a pit now, you know what I mean? And I'm out there acting like I'm, you know, George Foreman flipping these <laughs> salmon patties on this grill. And, and I learned over time how long to keep it on the grill to get the right crisp that I'm looking for. I learned how to get the grill hot enough that it don't overburn. But guess how I learned all of that? By mistakes. Because I done burnt some. Like I, done, I spent money and burnt a whole thing of salmon. That's, <laughs> and I was upset. And I was like, ah, Lee, I done spent this money. I done, like literally, it was burnt. But I learned more by my mistakes. And now I can tell you what didn't work for me. Because I can't tell you what's going to work for you. What I can do is say, you know what? This didn't work for me. Because what works for me might not work for you. Oh, my goodness. All right. Your mistakes make you. Many of us are sitting and resenting our failures when it is our failures that built us and gave us the best qualities in our life. You know what? The reason you are such a loving person is because you've been hurt. <laughs> yeah, the reason why you have a big heart is because you know what, how it feels dealing with people with small hearts. The reason why you're so loving is because so many people have come into your life and hurt you and lied to you. Your failures. And we look at, we look at that as failures in our life. The reason you help people is because you know what it feels like not to be helped. You know what it feels like to, to know if you call certain people, they're not going to answer the phone. You know that there are people that you can call right now that can help you out of your situation, but you know making that call, they going first of all, they're going to judge you by calling them. So I'd rather go down with the ship instead of make this phone call. Oh, yeah. Ooh. In this text, we see Jesus preparing to break Peter out of the greatest box. And that box is the lack of awareness. The lack of awareness. A lot of us are dealing with the lack of awareness. Like Peter, many of us are trapped in this box that we aren't even aware of. Mm. 
My next quote, put the next one up is, in order for us to break out of the box, we must first become aware of the box. Leave that up there for a second, D. I want you to put that, if you're writing it down, take a picture. Because a lot of us aren't even aware of our box. Because we, some of us call it personality. That's just part of my personality. Some of us are just stuck. You are so arrogant, so mean. Your family know it. Your friends know it. Now everybody has to shape their lives around you and your foolishness. Now before they do anything, they got to ask you where you want to eat, where you want to go. Because they know if they don't ask you, you're going to be the first one to complain and have something to say. And you're stuck in this place called pride. You're stuck in this box called pride. <laughs> Let me help us. Is, am I doing all right? I told you I ain't going to be long. I'm almost done. A lot of us, we, we think that God can't use what we already have. When God says that I can use whatever I need to use, the problem becomes is you won't allow him to use it in the manner he wants to use it. There is something... Again, let me talk about me because I don't know nothing about y'all, right? There is a level of defiance in your pastor. Like, that's just part of me, quote, unquote. Growing up, it got me into a lot of trouble because I was defiant to the end. And I was willing to stand against whatever I needed to stand against to get what I needed to get. I would go against anybody and anything. My, my mom would say it. My wife can tell you now. When I get something stuck in, stuck in my head, it's almost like pulling teeth to get me to not go after it, to not do everything. I'll do whatever I need to do. Almost to the point of putting myself in predicaments that I don't need to be in to almost prove a point. Again, pray for your pastor. He's working on me. Right, But that's part of me. That defiance. And as a kid, I got in a lot of trouble. But as an adult, I have allowed God to use that same thing to be able to stand up for righteousness and be willing to go against anything I need to go against that righteousness may succeed. Even to the point if I need to turn around and tell people I'm sorry, then I'll say it and truly mean it. Or if I need to back down. And sometimes a lot of us are arguing our point trying to be right when being right don't matter. What happens is you can destroy a lot with just trying to be the right person. Have you ever lost a friendship over who's right and wrong? When the, when the fact is it doesn't matter who's right and wrong? I always say, is it worth it? Is it worth losing something just to be right? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell them this because this is something I, I'm going to give y'all this for free. Right Here it is. I am past trying to prove to people that my God is real. Let me help you with that statement. I am not going to sit here and argue with you if God is real or not. I am convinced that he's real. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, the way I'm going to show you is live this life out in front of you and then let you make your own decision when we go through the same thing in life but we come out with two different results because I'm living the best life I possibly can in him while you are struggling. That's why people can go through the same thing and get different results. 
That's why I can go through the same thing you go through and you'll be ready to jump out a window and I know how to get on my knees and pray and God will strengthen me for the time he needs to strengthen me. So I'm no longer in this debate because a lot of people, especially when you tell people you're a pastor and they don't believe in God, the first thing they want to do is debate scripture with you. Have you ever brought up, God, have you ever brought up Jesus at work? And the minute you brought up Jesus, you almost be like, Lord Jesus, why did I even do this? Because now I'm stuck in this conversation. And every time you go to work, they, wanna, they got something new for you. They want to talk to you about. And they trying their best to disprove something. I always tell people all the time, I said, if you don't believe in it, then don't believe in it. Why are you spending so much time trying to disprove something that you don't believe in. Maybe it's because you know down somewhere in your spirit that there is something saying that this is real and you don't want to admit in your own psyche that this is it. All right. All right. All right, I'm almost done. Don't get stuck in pride. I've been hurt so many times where I, I, at one point in my life that I didn't even think God could do it. I didn't think God could mend my heart. Again, I'm talking about me, not talking about y'all. And I didn't think God could mend my heart. I didn't think God could do any of that. So what ended up happening in my life is I got to a point where I started using this phrase, I got me. I got me. I ain't worrying about them. I'm going to do me. I ain't going to worry about nobody. I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to look after me. I'm going to do me. Can't nobody. I got me. If I'm going to make it, it's going to be because of me. And I told you I was defiant to the end. Until God allowed me to see how much I really had. Because God will put you in a position well, you can't provide for yourself. Oh, my goodness. And I'm not just talking about financially. I'm talking about just in life in general. God will show you very quickly that if it's not for him, you can't do anything. So he'll put you in a place where you turn around, your friends can't help you, your family can't help you, your job can't help you, and you can't help you. That's a hard place to be in. But some of us, like me, I'm hard-headed. Pray for me. He had to put me into a place where he had to do it. And if he didn't do it, it wasn't going to get done. That I had to sit there and just pray, God, do it. How, however, I can come out of this. How, however you see fit. However, this is going to turn out, God, just do it. You know, I love Nike. They have the just do it check. And, and I was going through that time in my life, and I was just like, okay, God, just do it. Just do it. And then I started getting mad when he started doing it. Because what he started doing was, you know, if you know anything about planting, my, my wife has a, a garden um, and in this garden, we're both, I'm watching her, but as she's learning, she's learning how to, to prune things, right? And what pruning is, is to help something grow, you might have to cut some stuff off. And it can't grow to its full potential with certain things attached to it. It is not just about cutting things off. It's about cutting things off at the right moment. Because you can prune something too early. And you can prune something too late. It's all in the growing process. So what happened was, is I told God, do it. And he started doing it. But then he started cutting my friends loose. My friends, we just didn't, you know, they started falling off. I was getting mad at my friends. Hey, man, you ain't called me. What's going on with you? Oh, man, you know, ain't nothing. You know, I mean, 
I just been busy. I'm like, you, you, you one of my best friends. You too busy to call your boy? And he was like, yeah, no, man, we, we good. Like, are we? Because I could hear it in his voice. Like something was different. Like, what's going on with you? He's like, no, nah, I mean, I just, I just think, I just, and he said, I just think we need to reconsider our, our friendship. I'm like, bro, we grew up together. What do you mean? Because God knew I wasn't willing to cut that person off. So then he had to step in and cut that person off. Has God ever done that to you? When God had to come in and start pruning because you wasn't willing to prune yourself? Yeah, that's good. Peter is dealing with the same issue of pride. Let me set it up and then we'll go home. They are at the last supper at the table. Jesus is about to be betrayed and he looks at everybody and starts giving his last command. And he's telling everybody, this is what I want. This is how this needs to be done and and doing this. And then out of nowhere, Peter raises up and says that in Luke 22, 33, he says, Peter says, Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you and even to die with you. I like Jesus' response. But Jesus says, Peter, let me tell you something, bro. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times. You're going to deny that you even knew me. Many of us are surrounded around people that can talk to talk, but can't walk to walk. Peter was at this moment. Peter's a good guy. Peter ain't a bad dude. Peter is not evil. Peter is talking from a place of that he think he can do it. But Jesus says, what I'm about to do, what I'm about to go through, sir, you are not ready. Jesus never told him that he would never do it. He says, at this particular time, you're not ready. So before tomorrow ends, you're going to deny me three times. Just because he denied him didn't mean that he didn't love him. Let me help you. Right for my note takers, write this down. If God uses you, then the devil sees you. We think when we start talking about favor from God, we think that the devil don't see us. When God starts using you, the devil see that. The devil sees what's going on. Because there's a difference in just having problems versus warfare. Okay, let's deal with that real quick. There's a difference between having problems and warfare. When God starts using you, then the devil stops bringing you problems. He starts bringing you warfare. He starts bringing a war against you because he knows that God is using you. And so what he knows that he can't stop you, but his job is to try to slow you down or convince you to stop yourself so the difference is a problem is usually singular in nature when you know you just wake up and your car don't stop or your car don't start or you wake up and you can't find your keys that's a problem you know people are like you know you don't know what you want to eat that's a problem but when when the enemy starts to bring warfare is when you wake up and it seems like there's attack on all sides. Before you leave the house, your husband or your wife, y'all start arguing, the kids are going crazy, you leave the house and then you're stuck in traffic and people are cutting you off and they they cussing you out as they pass by you. You get to work and it seems like your boss got something out against you and it seems like everything in your life is going awry. Or you go to school and it looks like you study for one test and they spring a different type of test on you and you be like, what is going on? We, that ain't what y'all talked about. That ain't what we were studying. And out of anywhere it looks like you have problems on all sides. That might be an indication that you are dealing with warfare. The problem of us dealing with warfare we try to deal with warfare like we deal with problems. We try to talk our problems out, which is necessary. But with warfare, you can't talk 
You can't talk your way through a demon. When you're dealing with warfare, you're going to have to have people around you in life that can help pray you through, that can help fast when you don't want to fast, that can help push you to the next level in your walk with Christ because warfare takes bloodshed. Uh, uh, yeah, warfare takes bloodshed. And what happens is we talk a good game, but when the war comes, we don't want to shed no blood. What do you mean by shedding blood? We don't really want to put in the work that it takes. We can come to church. We can, we can make it look good. We can dress it up. But it is not until you get home and get into your own prayer closet or whatever closet you got. Most of us don't even have a prayer closet. Most of us don't pray at home. Most of us don't fast. Most of us don't read. Most of us don't do any of that. And then we get mad at God when the enemy comes in like a flood and it looks like he's winning. Well, there's no standard being produced in your house. Stop waiting for the church to do everything for you and your house. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's why we need the right people around us that can know the difference. There are certain people that we have in our lives when, when I know that there's a war being produced against me and my family. There are certain people I call. There are certain people I trust in my life that I can know that I can tell them the truth instead of them judging me they can pray and they can pray sincerely with a clear heart they can pray sincerely because sometimes have you it's sometimes it's hard to pray when you're going through stuff sometimes it's hard to pray when you're really going through stuff in your life because sometimes you don't know what to say because your prayer starts turning ang into anger <laughs> Have you ever prayed a mad prayer before? Where you try to go to God as simple as you can, but by the time you get to the middle of your prayer, you screaming. Woo! Somebody say warfare. Somebody's dealing with warfare. Favor means God picked you, which means the devil will pick on you. We think favor is for cars and houses and jobs. What favor really is, favor is the statement that God picked me. That's what favor really is. For this moment, for this hour, for this opportunity, I have favor. <laughs> and with you having favor in your life, then God picked you, which means the devil will do everything he can to pick on you. Do you feel like you're being picked on? You know, growing up on the, at the playground, growing up, you know, I don't, they don't even do playgrounds nowadays. You know what I mean? But I remember, you know, there was a playground, it was a sandbox, we would go outside, and then there were certain kids that just would pick on me, you know. I, you know, I grew up, you know, for, <laughs> I grew up and I, I've been wearing glasses since I can remember. I think I was like four or five wearing glasses. And I would hate going to recess, is what they used to call it. I would go to recess and take my glasses off because I had gotten tired of going to recess and being called four eyes and, and all this because I would get picked on. But here's the problem. I wasn't getting picked on by everybody. I was only getting picked on by a few. My issue was is that everybody wasn't picking on me, but nobody who wasn't picking on me came to my defense. So what I did was I hated the entire class. Not because of just the people who were picking on me. I hated the entire class because nobody would stand with me. Warfare feels just like that. Warfare feels like the enemy will send certain demons in your life that seems like they're picking on you, bringing you problems, but it seems like nobody around you will stick up for you. Oh my goodness. 
It seems like nobody will stick up for you when you're in warfare. Because guess what? Most people are afraid of it. Oh, that's good. Most people are afraid of warfare because they feel like if they, if they stick up for you, then the war comes to them. That's why you need the right people in your life. Because that, not the fact that they can just stick up for you, they are prepared to handle their own battles. Like how can, I, how can I pray for you when I don't even know how to pray for me? How can I be there for you when I can't even be there for me? How can I stand in the gap for you when there's nobody standing in the gap for me? How can I dance for you when ain't nobody dancing for me? How can I celebrate you when ain't nobody celebrating me? Warfare. I always talk about the island of Patmos. I, 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 I talk about it because it lets me know that everybody ends up on that island at some point in time. By yourself, stranded, stranded, trying to make it work, trying to do your best. We all raised our hand when we said we want to do better, but sometimes doing better puts you on the island by yourself. You trying to change your life, you trying to change your marriage, you trying to help your kids, but it seems like everybody around you still want to party, still want to club, still out here doing whatever they want to do, and it seems like they're living a better life than you, and you be like, God, why are they living a better life, and I'm over here doing what you say to do, thus says the Lord, and it feels like I'm sinking. Warfare. <laughs> it is very... If you don't, if you never deal with warfare, it might be because you are warring on the wrong side. If the enemy never attacks you, then you might be running with the enemy. If you never go through any problems in your life, it might mean that you're on the wrong side of the fence. That's why they ask you all the time, like, ooh, ooh, child, like you always going through something. Yes. Yes, I am. Thank you for noticing because I'm trying to do right. See, people will make you feel bad because you're having to deal with issues and mess in your life. It's not the fact that you have done anything wrong. It is simply because you're trying to do it right. So don't let people make you feel bad that you're doing right and the enemy is attacking you. Oh my goodness. I'll say this and let's, we'll go home. We'll go home after this, I promise. If you know that God has something for your life, put your hand up. You know it. Everybody in here should have their hand up. Everybody in here should have their hand up because you should know that God has something for you now. Now. At what level you become successful in what he's called you to is determined on by how much you have to deal with the devil. Okay. There's a man by the name of Job. The Bible says he was an upright man. He was a righteous man. Job wasn't messing with nobody. He wasn't doing anybody any harm. And he was doing everything he needed to do. He was giving. He was tithing. He was praying. He was providing for his family. He loved his children. He loved his wife. He did everything that he was supposed to do. And one day, Satan goes to God. And God says, what are you doing here? And Satan says, I'm just roaming 
to and fro seeking who I may devour. And then God says, have you considered my servant Job? A lot of us are in that moment where you have been considered. You're doing the right thing. Don't stop. Your name just came up. You have just been considered. You have been considered by God. And all you need to do is to stay consistent and stay the course. Because at the end of the day, the battle is not yours in the first place. The battle is the Lord's. And he will fight for you. But there is a time where you might have to just take some stuff. You might just have to take some stuff in your life. You just got to take it. It's, as much as you don't want to take it, you just have to take it. The Bible says, take up thine cross and follow me. There's some stuff that you're going to put on your back and just walk through it. There's some stuff that you just have that you're just going to have to walk through it. You just got to walk through it. You just got to walk through it. As much, as much as you got in your life, you got to walk through it. It might hurt. It might be, it might be heavy in your life, but you just got to walk through it. You got to carry it. Walk through it. It might be lonely. Walk through it. It might be heavy. Walk through it. How many times that you just have to walk through some stuff? 